Hey gang, Scott here. In this video, I want to share a uh, like a masking tool recipe that I use again and again and again when I'm doing masking in Lightroom uh, that uh, that lets me just paint in with a brush the, the finishing touches for, uh, for my images, uh, leveraging some of the protections that the Lightroom masking tools can give me so that uh, I can work visually and my masking brushing can can be a little bit lazy <laughs> at times, which um which which is okay uh, because we're gonna to leverage some tools that help us get the look that we want without having to spend so much time crafting the mask. It all hinges on the intersect part of Lightroom masking. Uh, if you're not familiar with intersect, I've done a larger video on it before, but you know, in brief, if you go back to uh, you know, your elementary school, you remember Venn diagrams where you had like set A and set B, and then if you have them overlap, the intersection of them is like the the part that we're interested in when we talk about intersecting masks. We can use one masking tool, intersect it with a second, and you're only gonna have the bits that overlap that remain. I'm a visual person, let's work visually. I'll show you a few examples of this in action. The first thing I wanna do is just show you the technique in action. And we'll, we'll do something that uh, doesn't really make a lot of sense, uh, but it'll show you what it means by intersecting. So let's get our masking tools open and let's get just a, um, a, a linear gradient. There's an example. Okay, so I'm gonna drag a linear gradient uh, here. Let's make it pretty crisp so we can see that, that gradient. All right, there we have a mask. What intersect will do, hover over our linear gradient we just made, triple dot, intersect. I'm gonna be working with a brush. I wanna paint things in. Now with my brush stroke, here's my brush. Now as soon as I start painting, you notice the only place that there's a mask is where I'm brushing. If I brush farther down into the photo, nothing is happening. Why? Because of that linear gradient. Remember that linear gradient is right here and it stops at this point. I'm hovering over it. This is the brush stroke I made. But the intersection means only give me things that are above the line. That's how Intersect is working. So how do we put this into use when we're doing some more finishing touches or, or, or moderate touches, you know, depending on where you're on your workflow, on your photo is think about what do you wanna to do to your photo? What area of the photo do you wanna affect? Kinda of get a general mask for that area and then intersect it with a brush to refine the selection and therefore refine the adjustment that you're going to make. I'll show you a few examples to go along here, give you some ideas of how you can use this with your photography. Okay, so let's let's clear this out. We don't need that mask anymore. Uh, for this photo, what do I want to do? Uh, I, I wanna add a little more detail into like this kind of sweeping curve of the clouds. I like that there is uh, some level of, uh, you know, it, more interesting texture that's in there, but I don't want to add anything further to the trees or the background uh, or, or anything in the foreground, anything on the sides of the sky. So uh, mainly I want to affect the sky. So let's go ahead and select the sky. Let uh, the AI do its thing there. And now I will add a bunch of clarity and a bunch of texture, and I'm pushing this really far so you can see it in the video, right? You can see the sky has gotten incredibly crispy, even revealed a couple of dust spots that I didn't catch. And I just wanna paint that in here. Well, that's where intersect with brush comes in. There's my brush. And now, as I paint, you're gonna see all that texture from the sides disappeared. And I'm only painting it in if I press the O key, you can see this is the result that I'm getting. Let's push my flow up on my brush there a bit more so we really can get the effect there. Turn off the overlay, and now you'll see all that, that texture and nuance just coming in here. If I drift into the foreground or hit those trees or anything like that, notice the sky in the background picked it up, but the trees in the foreground, all this area I didn't paint, uh, I, I painted over, did not because of the intersect. And uh, of course, for this, I would dial these uh, settings back to something a little more reasonable. But that's how Intersect is helping me add a little bit of an accent to the sky without um, having to be extra careful about when I brush toward the midground or the foreground. 
Now in this example, working with a sky, big open space, you know, yeah, maybe you don't need intersect, but there are other cases where this little recipe, select something and then use an intersect with a brush is, is even more helpful. I'm gonna show you another one here, let's go. For this photo, I want to boost up this uh, this bit of you know dust and sand that's blowing around the road there, and I, I want to do kind of like a glow type of look, make it a little brighter, a little softer, a little dreamier. You know, in, in nature, bright things glow, dark things don't. I'm sure you've heard me say that a ton of times uh, on on the channel here. And so instead of starting with trying to select this whole area, because this is a more difficult selection, I can't just say like select the dust. It's not like select the sky or draw a big linear gradient. But what we can do is this dust is generally bright, so we can leverage a luminosity mask to start with, and that's what we'll do. We'll create a luminance range mask, and I'll just click out in the brightest area of the dust. And I picked up a lot of things, right? The sky, some things in the hills. Uh, so our first step is refining our luminance range mask. Let's make the mask range tight. Let's pull in from the shadows side and let's nudge that up there, maybe up to here. This is already looking a lot better, right? Uh, I've still got the sky. I still got some of the, you know, the, the, the lines along the edge of the road, a few speckles here and there, but that's a pretty good selection, right? So uh, the next thing is what I don't want. I certainly don't want it in the sky. Like if I start adjusting sliders now, if I take exposure and I push it up, you know, we see a whole bunch of things change. We don't want the, all of that to change. We only want the dust. Well, I could subtract with a brush and start brushing all over the place. I prefer to do an intersection with a brush. And let's see, uh, feathers up, flow is good, the size is reasonable, Make the size a little bit bigger. And I'll just start painting through the area that I want to affect. And notice that I'll just kind of like go halfway across the road here and even out into the, the hills here. But notice my brush stroke is lazy, right? I'm, I'm, I, I can be all over the place and I'm only picking up the things that are within the luminance range mask intersected with where I'm painting. And once I've got a, a baseline of the area I want to affect, then I'll adjust sliders. So let's take exposure up. I'll take it up a little, a little hot. Um, and for a glow kind of look, clarity down, definitely don't like that. Texture down, that's nice. All the way down, you see how it gets really nice and soft and dreamy. So texture maybe about halfway. Then I'll return to the brush and maybe at a lower flow, kind of fill this out into the road, you know, in, into the distance there. I'll hit the O key to turn on the overlay so you can see what I'm doing here. I'm still intersecting with the luminance range mask. So I go way out into here and I'm clicking and dragging. I'm getting a few spectral highlights there of little bits of, of dust, but I'm not affecting the road. I'm just getting the main bits of the dust cloud and then maybe even up into these areas here just to taper off that look. Turn off the overlay and maybe to finish it off, we'll take the exposure down just some so that's not so hot, but then all of that added up. Let's, uh, I don't know why my mask is not behaving here. Let's close that, reopen it. There we go. Before and after, right? One more time, before and after. That nice little accent and doing that intersection it makes this mask work pretty straightforward and pretty easy. Uh, you know, again, you get to work looking at your photo, work visually, and then you can refine things. Let's do one more example. Uh, this is a, you know, an ocean, a seascape, although you could do this technique uh, with, you know, rivers, anything you have whitewash with. I should mention even this glow technique I just showed you. Uh, you could do that with uh, cityscapes where you've got, you know, street lamps or anything you just want to give a little pop of, uh, of softness to. But let's look at a seascape here. So for this photo, one of the finishing pieces I want to do is all this like streaks of the, the, the whitewash, the foam that's in the foreground. I want to brighten that a little bit. I want to do a dodge, really effectively. I want to dodge the white foam. And like I just said, this could work for streams, rivers, waterfalls, uh, 
waterfalls maybe depending on how uh, dispersed the waterfall is but for streams or rivers we've got like those streaks of whitewash this is a great technique and again it's intersect with a brush so we'll start again since um, we are talking about brightness values here let's do another luminance range mask and I'll choose one of these streaks of the whitewash right out there now it's going to pick up a lot right and as before, you know, it picks up the sky, it picks up a whole bunch of things. Keeping the overlay on, refining the luminance range. I don't want the middle shadow areas. I just want the little flecks of foam. And tugging that in is pretty good. And I'm really watching kind of like these bits here, these little bits of streaks, this stuff over on the right. When I get into the middle, this I will have to be a little careful with the brushing, if I don't want to get everything in the middle here, and I just want to kind of curve over these bits, but that's going to be okay. Uh, because intersect with brush will help us a lot with that. So uh, let's um, let's put the flow all the way back up, get our size reasonable, maybe a size a little bigger to start with, because we can be lazy with the brush strokes out here, right? I'm being really, really lazy. Right, you can see that, but it's only picking up the areas that were in the luminance range mask. Right? If I hover over that luminance range mask, that was what the luminance range mask did. And then I hover over the brush. That's what the brush is doing. The intersection of the two is just this, right? Luminance range mask, my very lazy brush strokes, the intersection. Really powerful tool. Now let's shrink down our brush and kind of just go along the seam of this here and something like that. Same thing out in this area, something like that. Maybe this streak here. Whoops, I did not let go of my brush for that. This streak here, lift this streak here. And then I can get to be a little lazier again when I get out into this section because there was less uh, overlap between the tones and the luminance range. And so this is how I'm working because I can see the overlay. All right, I, I've kind of painted in the main things I want to accent. Maybe that little bit right there. All right, uh, now let's adjust exposure. I'll push it really far. You can see what's going to jump up, right? And in this case, a tiny nudge there. Um, maybe a touch of clarity, a touch of texture, just to give a little crispness to it. But this dodge here, before and after, you know, really accents that foreground. And I think the only part where I, I'm not happy is just with this brush stroke right in here. Well, I have my brush. I can hold down the Option or the Alt key, and I can erase as necessary. Maybe do that with a lower flow and paint it back in so it tapers off a little bit. All of the nuance that you have with brushes and strength and everything, you still have all of that at your disposal. Intersecting it with some other mask, giving you this leverage to be able to you know, create a complicated intricate change before after but with minimal effort really a little thinking up front what do you generally want to select it could be a big region like the sky uh, it could be another section of a photo it could be based on luminance tones matter of fact let's try one more adjustment on this same photo using the technique but just to show you that you know the the the, the culmination of things you can do several different masking tools and then intersect on top of all of those to get a really nuanced look so uh, let's give this a try so as we were doing the, the dodge on the whitewash, I was looking at the left edge of the photo and all the sand here, and in particular, these couple of shadows that are out here. What about accenting those shadows, making those just a little deeper? And I can use the same technique, do some basic selection, and then intersect it with a brush. And for this one, why don't we try a color range mask instead? 
right? Because I could do luminance again, although those tones out there look, look pretty similar, but the colors are quite different. This is bright, this is pretty dark. So if I pick something in the shadow, the color range gets generated, very broad. We'll take the range and shrink it. And I'm watching to see until I get, well, I got down to one, it's as far as I can go. But that shadow is pretty well isolated. Now the color shows up in a lot of other places, which I'm not going to care about because we'll use intersect that color range with a brush. And let's see, I've got my feather up there. Let's put the flow at eh, three quarters of the way there. And with a little bit of care, but not a ton, I'm just gonna brush from left to right through there. And then maybe a little off to the edge there to make that smooth. Take the exposure, I'll push it way down so you can see what's being affected. But now I'm doing a, you know, I'm doing a burn. I'm leveraging a color range mask. I'm making that shadow, you know, nice to extend out there. And I can do the same painting here. I have the same same mask already selected, but if I paint out on this shadow, I'm gonna get the benefits of that same color range mask with the brush. And so if I hover over, that's the mask. And it was color range, refine that to generally address the area I want to affect. Make an adjustment, you saw me in this case, lower exposure, and then intersect it with a brush, work visually, and refine things. It's a fantastic technique for doing your, your mid-level uh, adjustments. You've done your globals, you're doing some mid-level things, or for those finishing touches. I hope you found the video useful. You got questions, drop them below. And until next time, my name's Scott Davenport. Have fun.